The next project is we're going to be putting in a floating shelf across here, just a small bookshelf, uh, 200 wide. To do that we're going to use these hidden shelf brackets that go on the wall here and they'll be drilled into what I'm actually going to use as a scaffold plank for the shelf so you won't have any shelf brackets. First of all I've got to measure out and work out where the studs are in this wall. I've got the line set with my laser for the height and then I've got to go along and determine where the mounting points for these are. Beauty about using these is they can be hidden anywhere along the shelf so I can make sure I pick up the studs rather than where these look nice. Now I'm going to try and find the studs by knocking so come and have a listen with me. So listen and you'll hear the sound change. Plasterboard. Back to plasterboard. A stud in here. I can also see evidence of it in a seam from the plaster so there's something here. Tapping out indicated a stud in this region so I've drilled a couple of pilot holes this one hit the stud nicely this one didn't so I use a screw in this one and a raw plug which I've already put in this one and that will give us lots of strength here. That's nice and tight. Now we've got all our brackets in and they're all level. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the shelf piece of wood, cut it to size, prep it to size, then I'll come in, I'll lay it on top and then I'll mark the whole centres so I don't have to measure, I'll get it absolutely right just by laying it on. So let's go outside and cut the shelf. Okay, I didn't press record. This is the piece of wood I'm using. It's a new scaffold plank. so. It's just a bit wide but it's nice and thick so I'm ripping it down to 200 wide which is enough for a book plus about an inch. I'm using my homemade track saw for this so I can get a nice straight cut. Then what I'll do is I'll put some roundovers on and sand it all down. So let's cut it. Here we go, nice straight cut. I've got to cut the checks off this end. I have checked with a bevel gauge, the corner is already square, so I'm just going to cut this off. Because it's square, I can use my speed square, set the groove or the guide on the saw up, set the blade up here with the line, and then put your square in place, and then use the square as the guide and you'll get a nice square cut. There we go. Got a round over bit in the router. I'm just going to put a big round over. I've done one up the big round over on the bottom edge to avoid people banging heads and I'm just going to put a small round over on the top and then it's all going to get sanded. There we go. I work my way down through the grits. This is some 80 grit on the belt sander. I'll give a marking all over the board so I know when I've been through once all the pencil marks are gone. Work 
work across the grain to get the worst of it off and then once the mark, most of the marks are gone I'll start working with the grain still with this grit and then I'll move down finer grits. So I'm all the way there with 80 grit. Now I'm going to take it upstairs, mark it out to drill the holes, and then drill the holes first before I finish sand it and stain it. So we'll go back upstairs and mark the hole pitch. Because of the length of the brackets, I've got to use an extra long drill bit. I've also got to make sure I've got the hole uh, square and level. So to do that, I've set up a guide. This enables me to sight down the drill this way and this way. So that's what I'm going to do now. my hole drilled for the bracket. Now I'm going to mortise out so that this bracket will sit flush. I'm going to do that with a wide bit in the router and a fence. That bit, so it's seen better days. There we go. So I think we're there. Just one last trial fit before we take it outside and stain it. Line the bracket holes up. Push it home. There we go. That fits quite nice. So we'll take it outside and stain it now. Now we're going to use a grey wood stain. The room's a grey tone palette. So we're going to use a grey wood stain. We're going to put it on with a scotch cloth and then we're going to take it off with some paper towel to the level we want. So let me just Put it, apply it, make sure we get it into the nooks and crannies, rub it in with the grain. I've already done the underside and the underside's up on some painting pyramids which are just little spots, little points that hold it up and won't mar the finish. We just rub, keep rubbing it in. It's already starting to get absorbed in some places. If you want a greyer finish, all you do is use more, more coats. I want quite a lot of wood still to show through. More to mask the fact that it's a bit of shiny pine. This is water based, it does raise the grain a little bit unfortunately, but we'll see what that comes up like. We might have to go over it with 
the scotch cloth just to flatten the grain afterwards. So the grey stain's gone on and dried off. Now I'm just going to give it a top coat with some Pollock soil. Again, this is a hard wax oil. It just gets rubbed on with a with a cloth, and then it will with a pad, and then it will dry up. So there we go. It's all finished. We can see we've got a lovely finish. The fit up against the wall is very good. Next, paint the wall and do the rest of the room. Thanks for watching.